I am just uh, thrilled and honored to have the opportunity to learn and share with you over these next um, about um, hour and 15 minutes. I think that's what we have. So thank you so much. Um, just a couple of things just before we begin. Um, as the first slide says, uh, if you could just keep your um, your mics muted. Um, we have a number of experts um, on the chat that are there to answer your questions. So if you have any questions, um, just please type them in the chat. Uh, we have uh, Curtis Bromley and Dana Medley from our ITS services um, um, moderating and answering questions as well as uh, I believe Jamil and Sandeep are also there answering questions. So please feel free to ask your questions through the chat. Um, if we see that there's a question that comes up fairly frequently, we'll stop and um, review those things and we'll, we'll, we'll come back to them. All right, so I'm just getting my notes uh, organized here and we'll get started. So just before we begin, um, just in terms of the outline, uh, my goal for today is to actually get you logged in and doing a few things um, within Outlook um, so that you get to experience what it's all about. So we're going to be signing in through portal.office.com. Um, you'll need your at Delta Schools credentials, and so that's going to be your new email. The prefix is the same as your first class. So mine is pdeconti um, at deltaschools.ca, just like it was pdeconti at deltasd.bc.ca. Your employee connect password is your password. Now, some of you may have trouble signing in. Um, our first suggestion is to make sure and check that you are using a, the at Delta Schools address and not your Delta SD address. The second would be to just use a different browser. Um, it may be a result of cookies and caching that's going on. And the easiest thing is just to use another browser. So if you're used to, if you're having trouble on Chrome, maybe try Safari or Firefox. Um, if you're on a PC, maybe Edge. So we'll uh, suggest those things. We also have a suggestion sheet um, that I'll post the link to in the chat right now if you do have trouble signing in. Okay, I'm just grabbing that link. I'll put it in the chat. And if you have trouble, you can just use this. All right. Okay, again, any questions, please put them in the chat. So um, we're going to look at Outlook. And Outlook is really the focus for our um, transition from first class for this year and so outlook is like a email program and that's what we're really focusing on getting people transition to this year um, we also have something called teams and we'll look at that um, and some of you will start to use that quite extensively depending on your comfort level and um, how your school sort of adopts it um, but that's really something that we'll really be diving into even more deeply starting in september and we'll be providing more in service and opportunities to learn about that all right, so through Outlook, we're going to look at the interface, the mail settings, the calendar, and the contacts, and then Teams, which is really a, a key communication and collaboration tool. We'll be looking at chat channels and video conferencing and resources. So that's sort of the journey that we'll be on for um, today. So uh, a couple of things about Teams and Outlook. So they're really new ways to communicate. And so Outlook is for mail. And we'll be looking at that mostly for sort of our external communications, more formal communications. communications. And, and uh, some of you will continue to use it, you know, as your primary one. Um, but I think as you start to learn more about Teams, you're going to gravitate towards the function of chat, which we'll look at today, which is for more for informal sort of communications. And then Teams and the channels and the video conferencing ability within that. And so we're going to look at all of that today um, as we go forward. All right. So a couple of things about what I would like you to be able to do today. So um, we're going to get started by getting you logged in to Office 365. Um, so the way we do that is, as uh, this slide right here shows, is we're going to sign in to portal.office.com. So this right here. So we're going to be using tabs. Um, so tabs are those things across the top in your browser and you might have to open some new ones. So you'll go to sort of that little plus or depending on the browser you're using, um, select that and you're going to click on that and you're going to open it and you're going to type in portal.office.com because that's where we're going to start from. 
www.thepowerofthenetwork.com. Now, as you're doing that, some of you might be asking, you know, well, why are we doing this on the web? Isn't there like an app for my computer for this? Well, the reason why we're starting on the web and we're focusing on the web is the web, what is called the web client, is consistent from device to device, platform to platform. So no matter if you're on a Windows machine or a Mac, if you're using Windows 7, Windows 10, if you're using a High Sierra or Big Sur on a Mac, your experience is going to be the same when you're using the browser. Whereas the apps that live on your computer vary quite a bit from one platform to the next and from one operating system to the or one um, operating system version to the next. So that's why we're pushing people towards the web right now. And really, it's no different than those of you who are familiar with Delta Learns Google in using Google. Google doesn't have any apps that we download to our computer. We use them all through the browser. And so um, Office is much the same way. And you'll learn, um, as I did, you know, I thought of Office as not as collaborative as, as, as Google, but really they've come a long way. And it's just as collaborative as Google is today. All right, so hopefully you've gotten there to office.portal.com. And then you are going to sign in. And so here's my account here. I've already signed in. You're going to sign in, remember, with that Delta Schools account. And then you're going to enter your password. And remember, your password is your Employee Connect password, all right? So we're trying to unify that to make things easier for people because we have so many passwords nowadays. Um, but we're trying to use that one um, for many things. So our um, Employee Connect password is now our Employee Connect password, our Delta Learns Google password, our Office 365 password, our printing password. Um, so it's, uh, and also for if you are on use any desktops in schools, it becomes our password for that as well. And so we're going to sign in to Outlook or Office. Now this, this will pop up to say, do you want to stay signed in? I'm going to say yes, um, because I'm on my own personal computer. If I was using a shared computer, I would certainly not say yes, um, because I don't want other people coming into my mail and uh, the other features. All right. OK. So here we are. Um, just this is our sort of our landing page. Um, so hopefully you've been able to um, log in. And I'll count on my um, moderators. Please uh, chime in, moderators, if I need to slow down or we're having trouble anywhere. All right. So here's my landing page. Um, you'll see that down the left, there's this sidebar here with a number of tools. Some of them I'm sure most of you are familiar with, like Word and Excel and PowerPoint. But then we have Outlook. We have something called OneDrive, which is much like Google Drive. Um, we have OneNote. We have SharePoint. These two we're not going to worry about at all at this point. And then we have Teams, which we'll come back to later. All right. So the first one we're going to land on is Outlook. And so Outlook is our mail program. And so we're going to just click on that and launch Outlook. All right, so here we are in, in our mail in an Outlook. And so just to go over a little bit about um, what we have here. All right, so we have again our left sidebar with a number of our tools, including like Word and Excel. And across the top, we have mail, we have calendar, which I will get into shortly. And we have here, we have our contacts, which we'll get into, attachments and tasks. And let's just look at this area over here. Um, so this is where we have our mail come in and our, our folders and things like that. Now you should have an inbox and to the left of the inbox is this arrow. And when you click on that arrow, it's going to open up to all the folders. So one of the things that has happened is your first class mail has been migrated over to Outlook. So any folders that you had in first class have migrated over to Outlook. So I had all of these folders. I've got lots of folders. These were all folders that I created in first class and they've all come over. And all of the contents has also come over, but only that content that was sent to me. So anything that was received and sent to me has now migrated over to Outlook. Any mail that you sent out will not have migrated. OK, so that's going to still be in your first class. But the good news is, is first class is still around. And first class is available to you um, for the rest of this school year. And, and it's it, it functions just the same as it always has. Um, and it'll be uh, available to you for the next school year as well, 
but at an, in a limited capacity. You'll still be able to see your mail and view your mail. You'll also be able to forward your mail to yourself. Um, but I have you know, some recommendations here. Once you migrate to Outlook, and I know many of you will be just like I was, skeptical, um, and you're gonna probably wanna check your first class just to make sure everything's coming over, right? And I did that. But after about a week, I got tired of living in two mail systems and I just went straight over to Outlook. And there's good reason for that. Um, one of the things is, is right now, any mail that is sent to your Delta SD account will go to your first class account as well as your Outlook account. But any mail that is sent to your new email address, so your at Delta schools address, will only go to your Outlook account. So if people start just mailing to that Delta Schools account, it's not gonna show up in your first class. And so you're gonna have to jump from one to the other to sort of keep up with your mail. So you might wanna do that initially just to make sure that you know you feel confident about it, but I can assure you it's all working well. Um, but I would encourage you to jump to Outlook as soon as possible. All right, um, so. This is so all of our folders have been migrated over and again all of the mail that was sent to us has come over. Now if you want to add a new folder, um, you can add new folders. And here we go. We have an option to create new folders. Um, another area over here I want to draw your attention to is the junk mail. And so if we look over here, there's something called junk mail and junk mail is like a puppy. It needs training um, because initially a lot, not a lot, but quite a number of messages that you are going to find in junk mail are messages that you actually want to keep. And you have to sort of train it to say that this is not junk. So if I open my junk mail box, I happen to have some junk there. Okay, and, and when I click on this, I have some options here. I can say, no, this is not junk. Or maybe this is phishing email. I know um, over the spring break, maybe many of you got an email from our, our uh, superintendent um, who was asking for um, you to run out and use your credit card to buy other credit or other uh, gift cards for him and, and bring them to him because he was really busy in a meeting and couldn't get out. That was a phishing email. And so I would mark that as phishing so that it was blocked and that people are notified that it's a phishing email. We can also block mail that's not legitimate. So we can block and we can add phishing. So this junk mail needs to be trained, but we also have to tell them like this one here is something that came back from actually that I notice is not junk. So I'm gonna mark that as not junk and I'm gonna report it. Okay, so for in the future now, mail from that domain or from that person will now go into my mailbox, will start to go into my mailbox. I might have to do that one or two or three times before it's really trained well, just like a puppy, um, but soon I will have no junk mail. So for the first two or three weeks, my junk mail was often, I'd have five, six, seven, eight messages in there every day. Now, today actually was the first day I had two messages in there in weeks. I had never had, I didn't have many messages in there at all, um, but now I do, all right? So that's an important one to, to draw your attention to. So we have some other ones here. So we have our inbox, that one's really important. This is where all our mail comes in and we can see all of our mail here. We have junk mail, which I just spoke about. And then we also have sent items. So anything that we send, we can also see here. These are all my sent emails, my received emails, and the drafts are any emails I started but didn't get a chance to finish. All right, so these are really important and for you to get sort of familiar with, all right? Okay. How are we doing, moderators, any questions about that? Okay, I think we're ready to move on. All right, so if you're in your mail, um, I'd like you to sort of take a, I'll give you another little quick tour of it. I'll continue my tour. We have a search up here that we can search by um, name, by subject matter, by words that are in an email. So if I said iPad, um, I would, all, this is everywhere that the word iPad appears. So it, it searches our mail way better than first class. First class never did anything like that. Um, so we can search our mail really well. Um, and then we have some other features over here. So this is where we're gonna do some work right away. So over here, there's a little gear and that's our settings gear. And I'd like you to click on that settings gear. Okay, and this is where we can adjust our settings. And there are some settings that we're gonna adjust right now and other ones that you're, you might wanna come back and look at later. 
So the first one is a theme and you know, I'm not gonna give you any time to do that because if I let you pick a theme now, I'll lose you for five minutes because everybody will wanna test all their different themes. But here was where your themes are. We also have something called dark mode and light mode and that's just you know, a personal preference. This one here is rather important. This is called focused inbox. So before you do it, what, you're, what I'm gonna ask you to do is, uh, hold on here, I just, oops. I'm just gonna go to my inbox here. Okay, so if you look at my inbox, I have this focused and other. This is another place where you wanna look for mail. I like my other mailbox because what it does is it filters out all those emails or kind of like uh, junk, uh, another form of junk mail. So maybe you subscribe to Pinterest and you get all those updates in, in Pinterest. They might appear here and it sort of says, well, these are probably not as important. You might wanna look at them later. So it filters them out. But if I want them all to just go to my focused or one mailbox, I can turn that off and just use my focused mailbox. And you can see that now I don't have that other and focused everything's going to come in here. So all those Pinterests, whatever it is, are going to just show up in here. I personally like having a focus mailbox because it allows me to eliminate a ton of email and makes me feel better about my email box because I go from like 50 emails down to like 35 um, because I know that they're not as important. Notifications you want, might want on, so that's up to you. Um, you have different ways of actually viewing how this appears. So this is full. You can go through these medium and compact, you can see how it changes here, but that's gonna be up to you to determine later. I'm not gonna spend any time giving you time to do that right now. So at the very bottom though is this important one that says view all Outlook settings. So if you could just click on that, and that's gonna show you all of your Outlook settings, everything from mail to calendars to general. Um, I'm gonna ask you to click on this general side tab here. And I'm just gonna draw your attention to one of these. And you'll see there's a number of different options within here. And again, this is something you can come through and sort of look at. Um, I'm just gonna point out those that are most important that, I, that we felt were most important to um, identify. So if I click on notifications, I can turn on all sorts of notifications. And I like to have notifications come across my desktop so I know when mail comes in. And so you can set how you want your notifications coming in here. Some people find that really troublesome and bothersome and they don't like them on. And so you can turn them on or off here. And that's all I'm drawing your attention to here. That's all the time we're gonna spend there. But we're gonna now go back to the mail here. So here's mail in all of the various things that I can do within mail in terms of my different settings. All right, um, the first one is layout, which was similar to what we saw on the first screen, and you can take your time to go through here and decide on how you want to manage it. But the first one where you're gonna do some work is here under compose and reply. So if you click on, comp click on compose and reply, this is where you add your email signature. And I'm gonna ask everyone right now to start their email signature and add that. So within this text box, it works very much like Word. It's very user-friendly. And because we are going to a new email address, it's pretty important that we let all of the people that we reply to and uh, people in our contacts know that they need to start to update our new contact. And the way we can do that is in our signature. So we're recommending that everyone put in their signature this sentence right here, something like that. It doesn't have to be exactly the way I've written it, but you can put it in your own words the way that I've put it in there. And mine just says, this email was composed using MS Outlook and originating from my new email address, pdaconti at deltaschools.ca. And then I've also put in my entire signature down below um, in terms of adding um, a logo and all of that. I have a whole little document that I'm gonna lead you to later that shows you how to do that. But for right now, if you could just add a sentence like that, just to sort of get used to adding a signature, um, and I'm gonna give you about a minute to just add that. And you can use your own words or you can use those words there, but it's important to let people know that you have a new address. And I'm gonna read it out slowly because as I know that um, it's pretty small on the screen and we're, we're working on ways to make it bigger and it's kind of difficult um, to see. So I'll just read it out and then you can type it in. So it can say something like this. This email was composed using Outlook and, and originating from my new email address and then put in your own email address. And I'm gonna put that right there actually. Oh, actually I even put it in the chat. So if you want to copy it into the chat from the chat.
Again, I saw someone say originating from out, you know, why is it important to put Outlook? No, it's not. I just put that in there um, because we're, we're because that might also um, let people know that we're also moving to the total MS um, suite. OK, so I'll give you about another 15 seconds to uh, add that. And even if you don't finish that right now, that's fine. You can always come back and add to it. It's totally fine um, to, do, to come back and do that later. All right. OK, so down below are two important boxes to, to click. One I would highly suggest that everyone use, and that's the first one that says automatically include my signature on new messages that I compose. So this will add your signature to every new message that you compose. And uh, you should be identifying yourself with any email that goes out. Um, I'll, I'll admit, and this is not judging anyone or anything, but it's very frustrating for me when I get emails from people and they don't include a signature um, because I don't know what school everyone teaches at. I don't know what department they're in. And so when you include a signature, it helps us identify, you know, even internally what school you're at um, in, in just how to contact you. So. Um, it should be included on all messages that you compose. Now, I also have checked off that it's automatically included in my signature on anything that I forward or reply. And I think that's important because when I forward something, it's probably to someone that wasn't part of the original message. So they'll need to know who it's coming from. And if they need to know, they may not know that I'm the digital learning coordinator um, and work out of DMAC. So that's important to include too. So I check that one off um, as well. All right. Um, OK, so that's pretty important. And then one more that I'll just draw your attention to. And if you scroll down, there's this undo send. And I know one of the things I have to give first class that I do miss from first class, and I've used it this week, <laughs> is the unsend option. And some of you might have used that where you send something and then you're like, oh my goodness, I made a spelling mistake or the, I missed uh, the date was wrong or something. How can I, You go in and unsend it and it's all good and it pulls it back from anyone with a Delta SD address. Well, you have 10 seconds to stop something from going out, up to 10 seconds. And so there's this undo send, and you can set it from anywhere from five to 10 seconds. And um, what it you do is you then get a notification that as you hit the send, you get a little notification at the bottom that says it's sending. And as soon as that notification disappears, it's basically too late. You can't pull it back, but it has an undo on it. So you have 10 seconds um, to, to pull something back, which isn't a lot of time, um, but it does have that. So we do get that question. All right. So that's compose and reply. Um, another one is attachments. And I'm just going to click on that one. Um, one of the things that you can do is for those of you who are heavily invested in Google, like I am, you may want to attach files that you currently have in your Google Drive. Um, and it's quite easy to do. So down below, there's some storage accounts and you can link to them. And here's my drive icon. And so for those of you who are still with me, so I'm under mail, attachments, and then drive. And when that pops up, because I'm signed into drive right now, or into my Google account right now, I select my account. And I have to allow. And after, when we go compose the message, you'll see that you'll be able to choose from your Google account. All right. Um, one thing to keep in mind as I'm going through this, and I should have said this at the beginning, um, at the end, I will share um, a slides presentation with all, I've, I've done screenshots of all of this, as well as this short little two minute or a little bit over um, videos on all of this that break down everything that we're doing and I'll share that later. So if you're finding that things are moving too quickly, um, that will be available to you. So there I've added my drive there. So that's one that's important. Um, I'm going to move on to junk mail. We talked about junk mail before. 
um, if you accidentally um, say something is junk and it's not, you can come here to remove it. So this is all my, these are all my junk mail that I don't want coming through, but if I made a mistake, I can remove it. And these are all the ones that were treated as junk that I've said are not junk. And so I can see how, you can see how much junk mail I was getting that was not junk to start off with. But I've trained my, my puppy and my puppy is behaving very well right now. All right, so that's the junk mail. Um, there's the opportunity to sync mail and forward mail. And I'm just gonna draw your attention to that. I kind of feel like I shouldn't because we do not want you to sync your mail or forward your mail. Um, we are using Outlook as our mail service. And because um, Outlook um, that we're using is hosted on servers in Canada, it's, it's compliant in terms of our privacy FOIPA um, regulations. Now, if we sync our mail to another service, we don't know where it's being routed and how it's being hosted. And so that's a no-no. We shouldn't be doing that. Is it okay to forward your Delta Learns Google Mail to your Outlook Mail? Absolutely, that's fine. Is it okay to forward Outlook to your Delta Learns Google? Absolutely not, um, because then it's no longer FOIPA compliant. And so the only forwarding that should, we should ever do is if we're forwarding to another Delta Schools address. And we sort of see that perhaps happening if someone takes leave, someone else is coming into the position and you, know, you want that person to um, deal with the mail, um, you could forward it to a Delta Schools address or an administrator or something like that. So just so that we're compliant, uh, we should not be syncing or forwarding mail. The last one that we're going to look at here is um, automatic replies, and this is really handy because in six and a little less weeks is summer break, and we can turn on our automatic replies. And so we can set it for a date, certain time period, so we can go and say, well, yeah, that's going to be all the way from uh, July 1st, let's say, actually it's probably about June 27th, to whenever we want to end. Then we can type a message and then we can have that auto reply. So that's an important one. I know people like to have that, okay? So that, those are some of the most important parts or pieces in terms of our settings within mail. There are many more that you can go through and look at, but those are the ones that we wanted to draw your attention to. Okay, moving on here. So we're, we're gonna save any changes we made. I don't wanna save any of these, so I'm gonna discard, and I'm gonna close this. So here's our mail. We're gonna compose our first mail. Um, so to compose mail, we click on new message. So you can click on that. Let's make some, let's make, let's add some mail. Um, we have the to field at the top here. And as I start to type, you can see it starts to auto populate. So you can start to type a name, it'll auto populate. And so I want to type it to Curtis. Okay. I can also search our contacts. And so if I click on this too, it brings me to my contacts and I can go to all my users. And I might want to also send this to Dana and I add the plus sign. I hit the plus sign to add to her or add Dana and there she is. And maybe I even want to add Jamil. Oh. Uh, there's Jamil, add the plus sign and then I add him and then save. So there's a few ways to add people. So again, you can click on the two, find whoever it is, or you can um, just start to type in the name. All right, we can add a subject, obviously. I'm testing my email and just add to the body. Down below, and this is one of the things that I really love about Outlook Mail as compared to first class, is that we can format it so much nicer um, and so much easier. We can easily add things like links. So hyperlinks are really easy to add. So connecting to websites and other things, different formatting features. Um, so we can do a lot here in terms of making it look good and um, fit the need, fit, fit our requirements. All right, so we can do that. We have some fun things like emojis and GIFs if you want to use those. Um, and then we have some other options when we can reach those from these three little dots or these three little dots. And so things like save as draft. We can also set the importance. So if it's something that's fairly urgent, we can use that there. Um, and then we just, it's a matter of send. And we can either send right away or we can send later. So we can schedule mail if we'd like, um, or we can send it immediately. 
Now, if I was to send this, remember I said that there was there was um, the ability to uh, to pull it back. I'll actually. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Well, sorry, I forgot about the attachment. That's right. So we linked the Google account. So because I've linked my Google account, so when I go to attachments, I can you know obviously attach things from my computer, but I can also browse uh, browse uh, browse other cloud locations, and that includes my Google Drive. So if I click on my drive, it takes a second, but these are all the folders I have within my Google Drive. And so I can, um, uh, let's just go in here. And this is my test document. I'll add this and just say next. Um, and I can, add, I can add it as a Google File Drive link. Um, and there it goes. OK, and then I also have an option to say I only want them to preview and I can also manage their access so I can say no, I only want them to view or I only want them to edit. OK, so I can add that and now that I'm ready, I can send. And here's that sending. I have 10 seconds. Do I want them to get it or not? No, I don't want them to get it. So I undid it. I undid it. I undoed it. Something like that. Um, and so now they don't get it. So but it's pretty quick. So for those of you, it's very quick. So I'll do it again. So for those who didn't see it way down here on the bottom left, it's sending. This time it's I'm going to let it go through. I set it to 10 seconds. Of course, now it seems like it's forever, but when you actually need it to be pulled back, it's a snap of the finger, right? So there we go. We can undo. All right. Moderators, how are we doing for mail? Any questions? I think we're doing all right. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, so next is calendar and calendar. I know there's a lot of interest in so calendar is the one right below mail. It looks like that. So we're going to go into calendar and do a couple of things in calendar. OK, so this is our general layout. Um, if we want to view it by week or by month, we can do that over here. So I like month personally, but some people like their week to see their week. Um, but so you can you can uh, change the view however you want. All right. Um, you have your your big calendar, your 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 calendar here as well, and then you have all of the calendars that you either subscribe to, or all of the calendars um, that you've created under your Delta Schools account. And we'll look at how we do that in a moment. Okay, so that's our general view. Um, just like in Mail, we can click on the clog or the gear, and we can view all Outlook settings. And now I'm in calendar. OK, and so under calendar, we can change some of the preferences. So, you know, some people might want to see Saturday and Sunday because they want to use it as their entire calendar for for everything. So you can add those um, and so you can manage it in different ways, um, however you want. So you can customize it and, and make it look uh, the way you want it to look. All right, so that that's my calendar, but let's actually get in and do some stuff in calendar. So when you when you have a calendar, most of you should have this, you know, whatever at Delta Schools and then calendar underneath. That's your general calendar. And so you add you create a calendar. Um, they create a calendar for you and it's added. So all this blue stuff is pretty much my my calendar stuff all in here. Um, but you may want to add an additional calendar. So let's say, for instance, you know, I'm in a pod and we have a resource that we share amongst us. There's four teachers in a pod and we want to keep track of that and know when we can use it and when someone else is using it. So we can create a calendar and share that with other people. So we're going to do this together. So if you want to try this, you're not going to um, harm anything by doing so. Oops, I didn't want to go that far just yet. But up above here, it says add a calendar. So right above it says add calendar. So if you click on that, it's going to say this and recommended, but we're actually going to just create a blank calendar. And so we're going to give it a calendar name. So you might call it just demo. Now I'm just going to be say I'm going to call it my iPad crate calendar because we have a crate that we share. And maybe it's in pod C, OK? And then we can assign it a color, OK? Doesn't really matter about the color. And then we can also assign it what they call a charm entirely up to you. And then we add it to whichever calendar we want. In general, it's going to be my calendar that we add it to. All right, so we have to give it a name, give it a color, 
and then save. All right, and then we can close this up. And so you can see here now, I have an iPad Crate Pod C calendar. Now, that's great for me, but I need my other colleagues to have access to that so that they can also see when things are booked and when they can book things. And so we can now just click on these three little dots at the end. You don't see them unless you put your cursor over them. All right. And we can change the color here as well if we want to do that. But we're going to go to sharing and permissions. And then I'm going to add just the name. So again, I'm going to add it. To, so I'm going to say, Curtis, you're going to have access to this. And then I can also say, OK, this is what Curtis can do with this calendar. He can view when I'm busy. He can view other locations. He can view all details or he can edit. Now I'm going to have him edit this because I want him to be able to also book. All right. So I'm going to select add, edit. All right. So if you if you've added a calendar, I'd like you to just practice with that. Um, you can just go to your calendar, the three dots, sharing and permissions, and just pick someone. And you can just type in their name. And maybe Dana. And maybe for Dana, I just want her to view because she's in another pod. And for whatever reason, I just want her to view. And of course, you can change any of those permissions at any time. And then you can just share it. And there we go. So there are my two users. And again, I can change those whenever I want. All right. OK, so I'm going to close that up. OK, so there I've added another calendar and you can add as many as you want. I don't think there's a limit. Um, Dana will let me know if there is a limit, but I don't think there's a limit. Um, so then how do we add to these calendars? So here we have our calendars. There's a couple of ways we can add new events. We can either double click on a date or we can go to new event. So I'm just going to double click on the 14th. So just double click on any day that you want. And I'm going to say Peter is using iPads. OK. So you, you're going to give it some sort of name. And then right above it are my calendars. And so if I select this drop down arrow, I can assign it to whichever calendar I want. And it's going to go to this iPad one. And you can see now it's turned pink because the color is pink for my iPad crate. So I've assigned it to that calendar. Now I need to give it a time. I'm going to use it from uh, 1030 to 1. And it blocks it off. OK, if I was doing this every Friday, I could repeat it. All right. And then once I'm done, I can just save it. All right, so here's where I assign it to the calendar that I want. Otherwise, every calendar defaults to this calendar here, which is your default calendar. If you don't make any changes, it just goes there. Most of the time, that's where we're going to add things. All right. Um, and then I can also, you know, invite other people to let them know about it. So maybe I'll invite Curtis again. Just to let him know. I don't know why I would, but perhaps you would. And, um, and then you would just save it and send. And there it is. You can see it. Um, the nice thing within the calendar also is if I made a mistake, I can easily drag and drop it and move it around to another day um, if I put it in the wrong place. All right. So that's how we add a, a calendar within and how we add events to our calendars. Um, now, some of you who might be using Google for your calendar, um, in the help document that I'll show you at the end, you can easily also sync your Google Calendar to your Outlook Calendar, and it's by subscribing. So that's what I've done here. So I have my Google Calendar here so that I have, because that's where I lived before. That's where I did most of my work. And you can also see all these check marks. If I just want to focus on one calendar, I can deselect everything. And so that all I do is you can see it's just focusing down on one calendar. So that's my main calendar. Um, we're in the midst of some training, so I want to see all my training so I can click on the training schedule as well and, and see those. 
so we can turn on and off um, our different calendars in terms of viewing them. Okay, so that's a little bit about calendar. Okay, the last feature within Outlook that we're going to spend some time on is the contacts. All right, so right here, this little sort of um, those people sort of things right there. These are the contacts. So a couple of things within contacts. Um, you can add contacts from first class and I'll show you where there's a document for your individual contacts um, and how to do that. And essentially you're going to export them from first class and then over on the far right here there's something called manage and you're going to import them and it'll import them. So that's what happened with all of these. I just imported all of these from first class. All right, it was a pretty easy um, thing to do. Dana's uh, prepared a really good document that helps walk you through that. All right, and I'll show you where that is at the end. Um, but you might also want to create a contact list. So you may have to add new contacts. So I would just create a new contact and click on that and add their information and details. But you can also create contact lists. Now that leads to the question about those of you who've created contact lists in first class and can I import that into um, Outlook? Okay, it's very on a Mac. It's essentially impossible. You can't do it. Um, I think that there there may uh, Dana. This is where I'm I'm relying on you. Um, I think on a PC there there might be a way, um, but most of us being on Macs, unfortunately, we're going to have to recreate um, our our contact lists. What we suggest, um, I still have contact lists in first class, so I sort of know which ones those are. So for the rest of this year, I'm just going to use first class whenever I have to reach out to those people on my contact list. Um, and then next year, when I have to recreate those contact lists, I'm going to do them. On, I'm going to create them in Outlook. So you can um, just wait until the the fall to then you create contact lists. Then. Um, or you can just use your first class contact list and just use your first class mail to send to your contact list. But you can create a contact list. Um, so you give it a name and then you just add the names of the people. So um, it can be either internal or external. You'll just need to know their email addresses and add those email addresses here to your contact list. All right, so we can do that. Um, within contacts, we also have all contacts in the district. Oops, uh, sorry, all users. These are all the users in the district. So if we're looking for a user, um, this is kind of handy because if we're not sure where someone is working, we can find the school that they're working at as well. And then there are some distribution lists um, that um, Information Services has created that we can use as contact lists. So like I know that there's one for vice principals and um, principals and various other groups um, that have already been created. Um, and you may have access to some of those as well uh, when you're um, looking for them. So that's a little bit about contacts. So contacts is one area you're, where you're going to have to sort of start a little bit from scratch um, and sort of have to build it up. Okay. So that sort of takes us to the end of the first part, um, which is the longer part on Outlook. And just remember that, you know, Outlook is that place that we're going to be doing most of our, our focusing and our work at this point. Um, and that's going to be um, something that we would hope that you start to use um, sooner uh, than later um, now that you've been migrated. Um, because remember, anyone who sends to that Delta Schools address, that's where the email is going to go. All right. OK, so next we're going to move over to Teams unless the moderators have anything that I need to focus on. Or I've missed. No, nope, I think we're OK. OK, thanks, Jamil. All right. So um, if you're still in contacts, look at that. Microsoft has a waffle just like Google. And so there's a waffle up here, and that leads to all of our apps. And if you don't see Teams here, you might have to go to Office 365, click on that, and we're back sort of home base, and there's Teams right there. So we're going to click on Teams and go visit Teams. Okay. All right, so oh, 
Why did my teams not show up? Uh, use the web instead. There we go. Okay, so here's my teams. Oh, good. And I have some chat messages. Excellent. Um, so Teams is a collaborative and communications workspace. Um, and so some people are really familiar with shared Google Drives, and I've heard people talk about it when they start to understand this. It's sort of like a shared Google Drive, but with way more capability um, because we can actually talk to people and uh, communicate with them as well. So again, down the left sidebar, we have activity. So whenever there's new activity, I get a notification here. We have something called chat, which I'll talk about in a moment. Teams, where I am right now. We have a calendar, which is kind of separate from our Outlook calendar, and I'll talk about that. And then we have the ability to make calls and have files. All right. So the first place we're going to start off is in chat. So here we have chat. A couple of things about chat. Um, the chat, uh, you can see here, I have a number of chats going on. But anything in bold is something that I have yet to read. OK, so there is a chat that I have yet to read. OK, so this one right here. So chat is something that we can use for really informal and quick communication. But what we also want to remember is, you know, we sort of live in this age of instant messaging. And just because we have this capability now, just to be aware of the boundaries that our colleagues might have. So, you know, you might have a quick question at 10 o'clock at night, but depending on who you're sending it to, you might want to refrain from sending it then because they're going to get a notification and maybe that's just not appropriate. Um, and you'll sort of know what the sort of the culture of people are in, whether that's appropriate or not. Um, so, but, you know, just be respectful of people's boundaries when we're using chat because we're really accessible through most of these forms of communication. Um, so we just want people to be aware of that. Um, all right. So in chat, uh, the first thing that we need to do is figure out, you know, how do we start a chat? So on the top left here, there's a little compose button and we type in the name of the person that uh, we might be chatting with. So I see someone. All right, so just because I know Angie's on this call, um, I've typed in Angie's name and I can start a chat with her. And I can start a chat with one person, two people, three people, four people, five people, as many people as I want, all right? And so I'm gonna start this with, with Angie. Um, and down below, I can start to type a message. And the beauty about what I, I like about chat is um, in most of the products within Teams is that we have the ability to format as well. And so I can sort of, you know, when we're, we, you know, I really want people to notice what this is about. So, you know, I might make it a big heading so that they know. And so this is about, you know, registration. And so people know if I could spell that this is about registration, you know, and I, I can make it bold. So it stands out. So there's, there's different ways to format um, differently. And then I can just add my message. Um, whatever it is. When is it? <laughs> OK, um, and then send. So and I can attach files to this as well. So if I had a file, so if Angie was saying, Peter, I really need this, you know, the agenda for the meeting or something, this is a great way to use it because then I can just go attach a file and I can upload it from my computer or if it's in my OneDrive, I can just quickly attach it. All right. Um, and so there's so many different ways that we can can use this. And then I, it's just a matter of send. OK, and so Angie might receive that and then she might reply. And you can see right now there's a little check mark right there. That means I've sent it. Once Angie sees it, it changes to an eyeball. Um, and then I know that she's seen it and then she can reply if she likes. Now, the other beauty of of uh, messages is that, you know, how often do we send an email and the person just sends back a thanks? Like, do we really need to know that? Um, do we really need to send that? In chat, I just have to use the emoji and just say, yep, got it. All right, and I can just use something like that within chat. So it's a, just a much better way to sort of sometimes communicate those quick sort of things. So we have chat built in. Um, if I start a chat and I want to add more people, on the far right hand side, there's this little icon here and I can I can add more and more people to the chat if that's necessary. All right. When I have a group chat going on, um, I find one of my group chats like here. When I add someone new. It also allows me to add uh, have the option of do I want them to see the entire conversation prior to when they were invited to the chat? Um, 
or do I want them to only see it for the like the past number of days? So, you know, maybe it's not relevant to them to see the entire chat history, but maybe the previous few days it is important for them to see it. Or maybe they don't need to see any of the history of the chat. Um, you can decide what you want that. So you just add the name of the person. I think Kurt's already a part of this one, but oh well. Um, and then you can just determine what it is that you want them to see within there. All right. And then you can just add them and determine how much of the chat that they want to see. All right. Uh, another important feature within chat is if it's one that's important. So like Jamil's a pretty important guy. And so I may want to pin Jamil's chats to the top up here so that they I see them all the time at the very top. So I can pin his up here. All right. Um, and if there's someone who I you know don't want to see all the time, I can also hide them. All right. Uh, and or I can mute them and you know sometimes you're part of a group chat that's going on and on about stuff that really you don't need to be a part of you can mute it and then unmute it um, it's kind of like you know on iMessage when you sort of use your little moon thing to sort of make the conversation sleep um, the conversation still goes on but you don't get the notifications um, so you can use that feature as well all right the other thing that you can do is up here where your person is is right now you can see that I'm presenting so it's marking me as busy um, but if you want to be available during you know, a certain time, it looks at your calendar and it says when you're available and not, and it gives you your, your availability. So the people can see what your availability is. All right. So that's chat. That's one feature within Teams. Okay. So informal communication, quick, here, I need a file. Can you send it to me? Are you available to meet with me after school? Great. Um, now, what you can also do is up here, hopefully you can see there's a little camera icon and there's a call icon. You know, and I find this super useful if I'm chatting back and forth. Sometimes it's just easier to talk or it's easier to do a video conference. I can click on this camera and because I'm in this conversation with the Apple Orchard, there's a, about five people in this. They'll all be not notified that there's a video conference starting and to join in. Or I can say it's just a phone call or a, an audio call. You choose which one you wanted. Um, so that's a really handy feature um, to save time because I, I just find talking is much faster than me typing. Uh, so it has that built in too. So it has a video conferencing feature built into it. All right, so that's chat. The next one we're going to quickly look at is Teams. All right, um, so depending on your role, your responsibilities, and your um, site or department, that's going to determine right now what teams you have. So the way team you're, the way you are made a member of a team currently is depending on your classification, where you work, how those things are set in our, our basically our, our, our employee management system or active directory system. However, it's set up in there. It looks and it says, okay, Peter DeConti, you work at DMAC and you're part of curriculum and instruction. So I have this team. I was put in that team because that's my role. You know, if I I don't work at um, SANS, but I know I'm on here SANS because we were playing around and testing with them. You know, anyone at SANS will have SANS. Anyone at Porky Sean will be in the Porky Sean one. Okay, so currently that's how the teams are being created. We realize that people are going to want to create teams for various reasons, and that will be a manual process. We will need someone to manage that team, and there will be a process coming out shortly to request a team. Um, teams will require two managers to add the members, manage it, and then let us know when it's no longer needed. All right. Now, the other thing about teams that you'll notice is you'll notice like district staff here isn't bold, but Outlook and help teams is bold. Um, that means something is new in there. There's something that I haven't read yet that has occurred in that team. So there's a lot that I've missed because there's a lot of bold here. All right. So what I'd like you to do is start off by finding your school's team and going into it. And I'll give you a little bit of a quick tour. Okay, so I'm gonna first of all just go into an elementary one. So this is Port Gishon. Now every school will have what are called channels, and these are all channels down the left-hand side. The top one is a general channel, and everyone has a general channel, everyone belongs to it. And I, uh, the general channel is much like um, back when I worked at McCloskey, when I walked in in the morning, there was a sign in book. I don't know why it was called a sign in book because we never signed in, but we always read like what was going to happen. OK, there's an assembly, there's whatever. There was information in there. That's sort of what the general channel for. It's for general communication in the school. So now 
any information that's of, of relevance to the people in the school may go in here. And it works just like a chat. Start a new conversation and add it. Um, all right, and you can come in here and read whatever. And then there might be some different channels. And everyone can have access to these channels, but you may only be interested in visiting, like, you know, I was an intermediate channel or teacher. So, pardon me, uh, so I might be part of this intermediate channel that I would like to view. Okay, and on the side here, I have some options. Okay, I can uh, turn on my notifications because I want to be alerted anytime something happens in this channel because I'm an intermediate teacher and that might be relevant to me. And there may be more channels added or taken away. So in secondary, there's far more channels because they'll have a channel for every department as well. And so if I teach in humanities as well as PE, I might want to turn on my notifications for both those channels so that anytime someone posts something, I am notified. All right. Um, so these are channels. Channels work much like chat. Um, you can anytime within a channel, whenever a file is added on the top here, it says files. Those files are also placed in here. So it became becomes a great place of sharing files and accessing files. So if I was an intermediate and I had a really great resource, I could share it within the intermediate channel add that file and then that file would live also here okay there's no files in this particular one but that file would live here thing to keep in mind with files is that when you put them in there everyone has access to it and everybody can edit it unless you change the rights to it so just be aware of that okay so there's a general channel so again so like this orca may 7th will be in here okay just because it files anything for that channel within there okay so those are different channels that there, there may be. Um, there can also be private channels. So channels are public by default, but there could be private channels. So for instance, in schools, if there was like a school-based team um, channel, that might be a private channel that only certain individuals have access to. Um, and that is managed by the team manager. So whoever's managing that team and you know if there was a school-based team one which there very well could be at port Gishon here i don't see it because i'm not a member of that team so it doesn't even show up it's not like i click on it and it says you don't have access it just doesn't show up um, so um, you need to request access to those teams via the manager all right So hopefully you can sort of see. So this becomes more of a formal, more formal than chat, because here I'm just dealing with my colleagues that have similar interests, um, similar roles in, in sharing information amongst us. And channels can be added and, and then deleted as well, depending on the need. All right. Um, so I'd like you to click on Teams one more time over here, and I'm going to bring you to the Outlook and Help team. OK, so here's the Outlook and Help team, and I'm drawing your attention here because this is a place where we would like you um, to uh, ask any questions that you have. All right, so if you have any questions and you're having struggles, you can post questions here and the team is really, really great about um, getting back to you and answering your questions. But before you post, we'd like you to first of all check our FAQs because the answer might already be there. So if you check on the FAQs, um, a lot of work has been put in. Uh, Dana's done a ton of work here in answering a lot of questions. So remember that question about how do I get my contacts into from Outlook to, or sorry, from first class to Outlook? It's the very first question. So if I click on this, I can find out how to do that. All right, so there's not a ton of them here, so it's not like you have to look forever and ever, but there are a number of, of you know, those frequently asked questions. So start here, okay? So this is under the Outlook and FAQs, right? Another place to look is under Files. So under Files, we've created a number of things here. So earlier we added a signature, and some of you were may have been wondering, well, how do I add the Delta logo? Well, in this folder, I have all of the banners. So all of the images are here that can be downloaded and are accessible. And there's also a PDF that explains how to add your signature. 
Okay, so you can go back and look at this and just go through the steps and how to add the signature. So that's right within there. Okay, also within the files, again, like I said, if I was going too quickly, oops. I've created uh, or we've created a number of guides. And these guides are in here. So there's one for an orientation guide for teams and uh, another one um, for um, Outlook. And you can use these orientation guides. And when you click on them, it's a PDF and you can go through it. And what you'll notice is whenever you see one of these little um, logos, it leads to the YouTube channel where we have a video explaining this concept. And the videos are quite short. They're usually, they're for sure under three minutes, but most of them are between about a minute and two minutes. Um, so we can see like if you're having trouble signing in, if you click on that, it'll help you. Um, I'm gonna just quickly scroll down, adding a signature. There's a, there's a video for that as well. Some of us learn better by watching videos. You can pause it and, and go forward. Um, and so there's all that documentation there. I'll go back to my teams. All right. General and files. So that's under your files. Okay. Um, there's also um, a link to the um, the SharePoint site, um, our website. Oh, sorry, that's up here, our help website. And that also provides a number of resources. There are some videos in here for level 100 Teams training and level 100 um, Outlook training. You can just watch those and play them and do those on your own time. All right. Okay, so those are some resources and those are in the Outlook teams and help. So first place to start is FAQs, then go into the files to see if there's something there that might help you post your questions. Um, and then there's also a help desk schedule and where there's someone sort of available online live and that schedule is posted here. If, if you'd like to do that, if you have any feedback, you can also post it here. Okay, um, last place that we're going to go um, and I think we're right on schedule here is within Teams Calendar. And so the Teams Calendar is a little different from Outlook. As you can see, my Outlook Calendar isn't in my Teams Calendar. But your Teams Calendar will talk to your Outlook's calendar. So it will like, if anything I put on this calendar will then end up on my Outlook Calendar. And Teams, this version, what I'm talking about now is how Teams is much like Zoom. So we've used Zoom a ton over the last year and a bit. Um, Zoom is probably be going, going to be going away from, from us um, at the end of the year um, because it was um, a provincially licensed um, uh, program and they will not be renewing licenses likely at the end of the year and there's a cost for that. And we have Teams and Teams works very much like Zoom. In fact, you're on a Teams video conference right now um, and you can see how it's very much like Zoom. And so within the calendar is where you can schedule your Teams meetings. And it works very much like in Outlook. I find a place where I want to have my meeting and I double click. And I give it a title. So this might be uh, tech planning. Oops, I need to click on here. And I'm just going to type right test because I don't want me to, I don't want to think that that actually isn't a, a planning meeting tomorrow or something. Um, and then, you know, what you do here then is you add the people that you want to attend and they can be either internal or external. So as long as you have their email address, you can add them. Okay. So I would add the people that I want. So I'm going to add Jamil. All right. And then I set a time. Let's say for 1, 11.30 and when I want it to end, um, whether I want it to repeat, I can add a location and then details. And then I would send it. And so now Jamil would receive an invitation in his mail as well as on his team's calendar. And I'll send that to, to Jamil. All right. And once you've started it, except I didn't look at the date that I sent it, now I'm going to Okay, I'm just going to quickly redo that actually. I don't think I, I thought I set it for tomorrow, but I don't think I did. And Jamil, sorry. Uh, 
3.30. And I'm going to set it. There we go. For tomorrow and then send. Okay. So there it is. My tech planning meeting with Jamil. Now when I open it again and I edit, I have some more options. And these options aren't available when I first create the meeting. And these are kind of important ones. If you have files that you want to add to this meeting, you can then add files. Okay, so if I had a file that I wanted to add. Um, if I wanted to, I have some meeting options here as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I went over that kind of quickly. So right here, there's meeting options. And this allows me to determine like, if I want people, if I, invite a large group or if I share the link to a large group, it tells me how I want to treat people in the lobby. So like today you went into a lobby and you were held and then admitted and that helps us screen people out. So in case we don't want to be what you know was called zoom bombing back at the beginning of all of this. Um, and so we want to be careful in terms of how we uh, allow people to bypass a lobby. So if I pull, select everyone can bypass a lobby, that means everyone just comes straight into the meeting. Um, but you need to pick the one that fits best for what you're doing. So it might just be people in my organization. So everyone with a Delta schools address would automatically get in. Anyone else would be filtered out. OK, if I had anyone that I added, you know, who I invited, they would all get in automatically. All right. Um, or maybe it's just me, which would be a really boring meeting. Um, OK, and then you can also determine who presents. That might be important, like who can screen share. Um, only specific people, only me. OK. Um, and then allow mic for attendees. You might like today, I could have probably just said no mic for any of you, and that would have solved all my problem. Not, not that I had any problems today, uh, but if there were problems with people um, um, wanting to use their mics uh, or not forgetting to disable them. All right. And then we can allow chat or not. All right. And then we save that. But we have to do this after the meet after the meeting's been created. All right. We can also copy the link here. So if, if we just want to share a link, um, we can do that um, right here. So if I copy the link, it's going to copy a link and I'll just show you that, that that is a link and there's a link to it. So we could share that meeting to people. So that's what we did with inviting all of you um, is we just shared that link in the email that that was sent out to you and then you just click on the link and you join it. Um, and then you're in the Teams meeting. Um, I just finished creating in the uh, the guides folder. There is an actual document in there with links to videos on how to conduct a Teams video conference. So you can look at that to get more details. And like I said, this will also be in your Outlook calendar. So if I now go to my Outlook and go to my Outlook calendar, I should have my, come on, Oh, my tech planning meeting. I thought it was on the Friday. It may there might be a delay here. I can't remember. And I can also join it from here. So I can join it from here as well. I can also start. Uh, I can also create a uh, Teams meeting from here. So if I if I click on the meeting here, you can see right here. This is a Teams meeting. So then I would invite people and it would create a Teams meeting from my Outlook calendar and that would show up in my Teams calendar. The calendars are a bit confusing, I admit. Um, so I can just turn that on and now that becomes a Teams meeting and I've done this from my Outlook calendar. And so let's just call this task two. And then if I invited someone, so Jamil's gonna be so busy tomorrow. Um, and then again, I send it. All right, and then Jamil would, would receive that. And there it is on the 21st. Let's see if it's on the 21st. Oops. And calendar. Oh, discard. And let's look at the 21st. The, the one thing with the uh, Teams calendar is that you can only see it in certain views. You cannot see it in a monthly view, which is kind of annoying to me. Oh, it hasn't come over yet. Oh, trust me, it does work. It just, there's a delay. It should be. Oh, there it is. Test two. There's a meeting there with Jamil. So it appears in both places. All right. So that's the Teams calendar and starting a video conference. You can start a video conference immediately by just saying meet now and then just add the names of the people um, or you can schedule it. So there's your introduction or your orientation to Outlook in Teams. I hope you have found this uh, somewhat helpful to get you started. 
Um, again, we're here to support you through our Outlook and Teams help within the Teams. So this one right here, please post your questions. Please use the FAQs. Please use the resources in there um, and, and we're happy to help. Remember the emphasis this year really is on Outlook um, and then moving forward next year is Teams, but we also encourage you to explore Teams and start using Teams now. And it's going to vary because um, not all schools are being migrated at the same time. And so you're going to have to sort of live in first class, especially if you belong to like, if you're a teacher librarian or belong to one of those conferences, you're going to still have to go into first class to see any updates for those conferences because we haven't set those up yet. So that is my time. I'm four minutes. I think I have four minutes to go. Um, if there are any questions, um, if you'd like to post those in the chat, but we'd like to thank you so much for taking time today to be a part of this. We appreciate uh, you being here and we look forward to, to using these new tools with you and communicating back and forth. So everyone have a great night. Thanks so much um, and we'll be in touch.